If you would like to turn to Revelation chapter 5 in your pew Bibles, Revelation is the last chapter, or last book. Then I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne a scroll written on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. Then one of the elders said to me, do, do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell before the lamb each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign the earth. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with one full voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing. To the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Peace to you from God the Father, Christ Jesus, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit who moves among us. Amen. We are continuing our journey through the book of Revelation with a vision that presses readers then and now to see power and might through a different lens. Last Sunday, concluded with praise and glory and honor to the one God worthy of worship, God the creator of all things. If you missed Pastor Chris's message last Sunday or Pastor Carrie's the Sunday before on June 18th, I encourage you to check them out on our website. I promise you'll be glad you took the time. So now in Revelation 5, John's throne room vision continues with an image of God holding a scroll in his hand. The scroll contains a very important message 
which we understand is the will of God written on that scroll. It is secured with seven seals to assure that the message is authentic and has not been tampered with. Sort of like seven layers of passwords to make sure that highly confidential information isn't hacked and then leaked. Sound familiar? But there is a serious problem. It appears no one in heaven or earth or under earth is worthy to break the seals and then open the scroll. What good is the message without someone to receive it? And so John weeps. One of the heavenly elders consoles John, saying, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. This is what John hears, but it's not what he sees. His vision is not of a lion, but of a lamb, slaughtered, yet still living. We wonder, I wonder, how could a sacrificial lamb be worthy to open that scroll and reveal the will of the Almighty? John's images of the lion and the lamb, as well as the other images throughout this book, were not meant to be cryptic codes, but rather were intended to more fully reveal and to re-emphasize the truths of Christ to the early churches that he addressed. The lion, historically, connoted power and majesty. Has anyone ever seen a lion? A few of you? Great power. And the lion is identified with Judah, the tribe of Israel from which King David came. And David was a fierce warrior who fought like a lion. And he conquered neighboring peoples to advance the kingdom of Israel. And the prophets looked for the Messiah to come from the root of David, King David. Those who conquered over others, including King David, provide, approve their power by displaying dominance and by inflicting death. They killed their foes, they took the land, they seized the spoils, and they captured their survivors, making them slaves. And these slaves were the lowest in the social hierarchy they weren't considered citizens, and they weren't allowed to participate in sacred rituals or worship. The readers of Revelation understood power and conquest as they were being ruled under the, under the rule of the cold-blooded Roman Emperor Domitian. He demanded to be deified as Lord and God and commanded lauds and praise from the crowds, you are worthy, you are worthy. And Christians, like those in the churches John was addressing, those who refused to worship the emperor were threatened, exiled, like John of Patmos, or put to death. Now contrast the majestic lion image to that of the slaughtered lamb. This lamb conquered not by inflicting death, but by enduring death. The lamb, the, the crucified and risen Christ. In John's vision, this lamb has, we heard, seven eyes which represent the seven spirits of God. And it also had seven horns, 
which connoted royal power. The death of Christ is the way that power, the power of God, is unleashed into the world. The Lamb was slain to serve as a ransom for people of every tribe, language, and nation. And so the Lamb is found worthy, worthy to open the scroll and then to make God's will known that all should join the kingdom of God, not as slaves of conquest or coerced subjects of the emperor, but as respected priests. And in this new kingdom, all are called to sacred service and to freely worship the true God. And the heavenly chorus grows it now includes every creature on hev heaven and earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them. And together they sing a new song of praise to God and to the Lamb. We, you and I, are part of this new inclusive kingdom. We are members of God's universal chorus singing a new song to the Lord. And our Sunday worship is our time of rehearsal. We get ready to re-enter our communities, our homes, our committees, our country. It is in these places that we will encounter some tough times and some tough choices about how we will proclaim with our words and our actions Christ crucified and risen. We will be tempted, tempted to give allegiance to other powers instead of the one who is truly worthy. And we will want our own individual voices to be heard over others and not blend in with the music of the chorus. Sadly, I feel we find that exhibited quite often in our country today. And so as we approach the 4th of July, the day that the Declaration of Independence was adopted by the Continental Congress in 17, 1776, got a little history here, our forebears claimed and fought for freedom from allegiance to the royal crown and from King George III. The declaration states, and here again I ask you to join in if you, if you remember part or all of this, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The 13 colonies joined to form one nation, the United States of America. One nation. But today we are a country deeply divided. I think we can agree on that. Divided into us and them, right and wrong, Christian, not Christian, pro this, anti that, worthy, unworthy. And extend the reach beyond our borders and the divisions become even deeper. We seem to have lost sight of unity and community in quest for our personal freedoms and our individual powers. The book of Revelation challenges us in this time and this place to find our voices and to speak God's truth, that all are included in God's kingdom those of every tribe, language, people, and nation, all are granted 
equal status. And if equal in God's kingdom, then certainly also worthy of equality and justice in this world which God has created. Well, try as we might, myself included, to be a faithful voice to those around us wherever we are. We fall out of rhythm. We start to sing our own melodies instead of the one that others are trying to sing. So we return. We return to our place of rehearsal to be reminded yet again of the message power and blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb, the one who in love died for me and for you and for you and you and you and you. And all the people said, Amen.